Entertainment, to Creative Artists Agency, WME and CAA, and to Sierra Affinity for providing us with the film. Brady Corbett is uh, someone you might have come to know first as an actor. His credits include Martha, Marcy May Marlene, Force Majeure, Clouds of Sills and Maria, and Eden. A lot of those are European films, but Brady was born in Scottsdale, Arizona. When you see his work as a director, you'll see that he is immersed both in American cinema and in international art house cinema. He made his feature directorial debut with The Childhood of a Leader three years ago in 2015, which some of you might have seen. This is his latest film. I don't think I want to say too much about it before you see it. It's something that you need to experience, but if you're familiar with the term society and the spectacle, you will see it uh, in the flesh. And we're very pleased that Brady is here to introduce the film to you. Please join me in welcoming the director of the hospital, Brady Corbett. I just want to thank the festival for having us, and um, uh, and I would like to, to thank uh, the producers of the film because this was a very difficult film to produce. So thank you so much uh, for uh, getting it made. Um, uh, Natalie and Jude and I will be back for a Q and A at the end of the film. Um, I hope you, uh, well, I don't hope anything, I'll see you on that. Stage, writer, director, Brady Corbett. And that is, that is what I'm going to do. Fox Locks deals with so many of the most critical issues of the last 20 years, from school shootings to terrorism to erasure of privacy in public life. And what I'm most curious about is that when you began to conceive the project, did it come out of a, a desire to explore these themes, or was it the story or the character? Yeah, I started with the themes. I mean, that's, it's, uh, yeah. I, it, um, I, I was living uh, in, in Paris, um, uh, just a block away from where the Vatican attack was, and, and, and um, uh, a restaurant got shot up that I frequented with my newborn daughter, and um, uh, it was fairly distressing and haunting, and, um, and it sort of started there. Uh, but, um, but then, you know, it evolved. And, it, it kind of took on life of its own. Yeah. And, and for you, I mean, Jude, I wonder if, uh, when you're working on a project like this as an actor, do you find yourself uh, thinking about how the themes of the film have played into your own life and your own experiences, or do you just focus on the character? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, you, I, I feel like this, this kind of commodification of everything, like where, where, you know, violence becomes something you sell, news is something you sell, private life of, you, you sell your private life, and all of that, um, you know, the line in the movie about what's, what brings a terrorist and a pop star sort of in alignment is that people paying attention to them is what makes them valuable and what gives them power. And that kind of commodification of attention is like exactly what we're living through right now. So, I mean, we all live it every day. It's our politics, it's our culture. Uh, I was going to say, what's fun is when um, it's, it's interesting. I, 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 I love this question for Brady, too. Um, what's, what's, fun is, what's fun is hearing what, what, what started uh, uh, the whole thing for him because the themes are you know, you read something that, that provoke something in you and that you're curious about that you feel is relevant and alive and that you think plugs into what we're all going through. And then as an actor, it's exciting when you just get to step in and do your little bit. 
right? That's all your that's all you've got in front of you, but you're aware that you're a part of a much bigger picture. So it's <coughs> fun coming here and just seeing it and sharing it because you're aware you're a part of a bigger picture, but at, at the time you're just sort of doing one little bit. Um, what is Vox like to the title? It means voice of light. Uh, can you explain why the film is difficult to get produced? Now that you've seen it, you probably understand why. <laughs> Um, I mean, the, um, these are things that don't normally go together. Uh, I mean, the, the, whole, the whole movie is one juxtaposition of, I mean, the first half of the movie is minimalism, the second half of the movie is maximalism, uh, first half of the movie is impressionistic, the second half is expressionistic. We have Scott Walker's score, we have Sia's pop songs. Um, so, you know, I, I think that a lot of people just didn't understand it. And um, I don't think they... I don't think they understood the tone, uh, you know, because it, 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 the tone evolves and, and changes a lot over the course of, of the film. Um, and so it was just unusual, and it, it just took a long time to find the right people to bring it to life. But, you know, here we are. Yeah, I'm trying to imagine the elevator pitch. <laughs> it, did, it didn't go well. The question is regarding the decision to have Willem Dafoe do the voiceover narration. I just, I just um, uh, wanted to set it up like a fable in as direct a way as possible. Um, so, because when you're dealing with um, with uh, uh, topical sort of uh, subject matter, you know, I didn't want people to think that the film was a neo-realist um, statement. The, the idea was that it was, you know, it's an opera, it's a pop opera. Um, and so, a narrator just seemed. Um, uh, appropriate. But the concept behind the visual style and how that would have played into uh, the performances as well. I, I really, I thought a lot about um, American movies from the, the 70s and the early 80s, like the Grove movies and stuff, and how free they were. Um, uh, I, I, you know, they, 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 they wouldn't necessarily begin how they'd end. They had a constant forward trajectory. And, um, and I really like that, because I find sitting, I find that I often sit down to watch a film and I know really where it's headed. Um, and, uh, and to keep mixing things up, I just thought it would be more alive, more like a patchwork will. And I don't know if you guys have a comment about um, how camera plays yeah, it, so. it was a, um, just daily, there was a wonderful sense of uh, focus, break, Brilliant, brilliant. I certainly had spoken at length about about his how he how he saw each scene, and he was so clear and specific uh, about about how to how he was going to shoot it, and he, he kept his um, his courage, you know, from, from talking about it on the page right through to the day that we shot it, and, and he'd turn up, and some of those scenes you'll see are you know one one shot, and you know it takes a huge amount of balls to turn up on a day, you know. We, we made a big decision earlier when we would just rehearse for a couple of hours and get it right, and then once, once you've done that, you've got maybe a couple of hours to just, you know, run it and hope that you're going to get it in the can. And that, that, that immediately focuses everyone's attention and gives you a specificity that is like, okay, this is, this, these are the parameters of, of, of how we're going to get this scene, and everyone then applies themselves, and it, it, it gives you, I don't know, I, 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 I left this experience feeling very big way about filmmaking as opposed to let's just get coverage and shoot and we'll sort it all out in post. Or, you know, it felt very much, it was courageous and it was um, specific, I think is the word, which was challenging, you know, and rewarding. Yeah, and we did, for, for the section I did, uh, it was almost all long steady cam takes, which is the best as an actor because we just, we could just play, and I felt like we, you know, it's not like little fragments. You kind of get to have the whole shape of a scene and really go through it and try different things. And despite having such a short time to shoot, um, we, I felt like we really had room, really, really creative room to play and explore and try different things and freedom, um, which was, I, I agree with you, that it felt like very fun and alive and creative and in a way that's very, Comment. Only really good actors love long takes. <laughs> right. Cool, I'm so yeah, questions about the double casting of the film. Um, 
Um, I mean, the film is about the cyclical nature of everything. Um, the news cycle and the life cycle. And that's why she plays. My question is, if I understand correctly, uh, what you might, you might change now that we finish the film? Yeah, even though it's been received very well, maybe there's always something. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I, I only finished the movie like a week ago, so <laughs> I, no, 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 I mean, I, I, it's, a, it's a good question, and, but I, I, I'll, I'm sure I'll have a lot more to say about it in one year, because the thing is, is that when you, making movies, whether you're acting in them or, or making them, they're like baby pictures, so, you know, you get on down the line and you realize, oh shit, I was a little fat, you know, <laughs> So I, I, I don't know, I, mean, I hope that the movies I make in a decade are much better than the ones that I'm making now, but you know, I'm doing the best with what I have. <laughs> uh, the movie screen resonated. Oh, only you. They're too close to me. Is that where it comes from? Now I get it. No, thank God. the joy, you know, it was like sending in this world, it was a little bit where I was like, God, oh, yeah, I, mean, I wish I did like this, <laughs> you know, and then, and then in hindsight, no, I was so glad that it. it was, you know, that's one of the joys, is that you get to down in a world that you, uh, that you dare not live in, that you don't live in. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I was like running from set to go like breastfeed my baby and like get avocado all over me and you know be like a distraught mess. Um, not not the same or reminiscent at all. Now that it was like changing diapers with his nails on. <laughs> not advisable. It's just regarding uh, sources uh, for your, your character. Well, the the character's definitely an invention of Brady's, but definitely in, inspired by a lot of different people. I don't want to say specific people, <laughs> really, because <laughs> um, uh, it's probably not anything someone wants to be compared to. Um, but I, I watched all the documentaries that exist, so I can imagine. Great. Well, Great, Natalie. Thank you so much. Thank you.